Okay, let's take stock of where we are. We introduced dynamic games three lectures ago, and uh, in particular extensive form games. And our main conclusion was that in the previous lecture was that these such games will inherit equilibria from in informationally inferior inferior games. Okay, so a game, a dynamic game. inherits equilibria from informationally inferior games. Okay. So, what it what this implies is that these such games will in general have a large number of equilibria because they all the equilibria of inferior games will also show up as equilibria here. Now, the if you want to find all equilibria, if you, to find all equilibria of a game, all equilibria of a game, what we need to do is go to the normal form, which means which means we have to list out all the strategies of all the players, make it into a table and then uh, find, find the Nash equilibrium treating that as a simultaneous move games, game in this space of strategy. The, the big challenge with this sort of approach is that it obviously is uh, takes a lot of effort because you have to list out a large number all these strategies. Usually the strategies are uh, exponentially many if in the number of actions and number of information sets. So, uh, so this is not going to be an easy uh, computationally or you know even analytically an easy task. So, another op al alternative is to analyze the structure of the game. If so, the alternative to find uh, to find if you really want to find all equilibria, you have to go down to the normal form. But if you want to find some equilibrium, okay, at least one equilibrium, or if, uh, then the whole then what you could do is analyze the structure of the game and from the structure of the game try to assess if you can argue what uh, what the uh, what the likely mode of play is going to be okay so one of these we had done uh, earlier also if you remember in our in the first game that we saw we had this l1 r1 l2 r2 type of game and what we did was we we started arguing about this game by saying so this was player 1 this was player 2 and the way we we argued about this game is that we said let well if the game comes to this this node then player 2 would play uh, play a particular strategy then player 1 has to decide whether he takes the game to uh, to the left node or to the right node and then based on that you decide player player 1 strategy now the uh, this this way of of uh, uh, this way of kind of reasoning through the game actually k was an equilibrium of the game ok. So, now this fact is actually more generally true ok. So, that is the thing I want to point out uh, to you it is not that hard to show, but we will skip the proof. So, if you have a game of perfect information, if g is a game of perfect information. Then its equilibrium can be found its equilibrium or then an equilibrium can be found by backward induction. Now, what do I mean by backward induction? By backward induction, basically, I mean this process that you start with the 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 nodes that are the parents of the leaf nodes. So these are these two are your leaf nodes. Take the parent of the leaf node. There will be some player acting at that at that node. And since this is a game of perfect information, that player has knows exactly whoever whichever is that player, he knows exactly that that is where he would be. That is the node he would be at, right? And so, then in that case, you can ask, okay, what is the best action that the player should take at that node? Then what you do is remove 
if you, once you once you know that what action is to be taken at that node you can just remove the rest of the, the this part of the tree the part of the tree that starts from this node and replace it with the payoff that the players that that player and all other players would get when this player takes the optimal action at this node okay so so let's just take a so the zero sum game was that this is player 1 two actions l1 r1 then player 2 three actions l2 m2 r2 now and uh, here are the the uh, these are the payoffs. This is for player two. Player two is a maximizing player. He is looking for the largest value. Player one is a minimizing player, He's looking for the least value. So what you do is you start with, as I said, leaf, but the the parent of the leaf node. Okay. So take stay. So these three leaf nodes have this node as the parent. So I started. So assume you are here. So assume that the game is here. Now, if the game is here, what would player 2 play? Player 2 wants to maximize. So, player 2 would play M2, right? So, player 2 would play M2. So, then what this means is I can now say, well, this tree has been condensed to something like this. This part of the tree has been condensed to something like this, where player 2 has already played M2, okay? And the resulting payoff has been accrued. So, that means this the tree now is something like this R1, M2, R2. Now, at this, what about at this node? Now, here again, it's, it's player 2's turn to play. What would player 2 play? If you would play R2, you would R2 to get 7, right? So, then what this means is this further reduces in the following way in this form. And now player 1 is minimizing. So, what would player 1 play? He would play L1, right? So, so technically we should actually be going from here directly here. But uh, the uh, so long as you are careful, it does it should not matter. The point you start with all the leaves first, okay? Go and then go to their parent. Then you take the next the leaves of the uh, of the next tree that you get. Go to their parent and and so on and so forth. Okay. So the so this is how you uh, so so by doing this, what you have effectively found is an equilibrium of the game. And how do I understand this as an equilibrium of the game? Well. So, this is sorry player 1. Okay, how do I understand this as, a, as the equilibrium of the game? Well, the equilibrium is that player 1 is playing L1 and player 2 is playing like this. Player 2 strategy is that if player 1 plays L1, he would play M2 and if player 2, player 1 plays R1, he would play R2. Is clear? So that is how I am interpret this strategy. So essentially what this what this has done is it has told me what to do at every information set, right? It's told me that at this information set player 2 should be playing M2, at this information set player 2 should be playing R2. Is this clear? Now this is very easy to do in this kind of structure because there is every node is a separate information set. Every node is a singleton information set. The game is of perfect information. Now imagine you had something like this. Okay, I will give you a more complicated example. So, suppose you had a game like this with three players. This is player one. This is, these are nodes of player two. Okay, player two cannot tell uh, between these two nodes. I do not, I am not going to give them uh, names to the actions, but the important thing to see is the structure. Then this is player three. And player for player 3, 
the information sets are like this. Now, how would you do this? How would you apply extend this logic? So, the, you, the first immediate trouble you encounter is this that if you start from leaf and go to the parent of the leaf, you can you cannot look at this subtree in isolation. You cannot look at just this tree in isolation, you just mark this here, look at this yellow tree. Can you look at player 3's decision on just the yellow tree in isolation? It is not possible because player 3 does not know that he is on the yellow tree. He is confused about whether he is on the yellow tree or on the blue tree. Player 3 does not know whether he is on the yellow tree or the blue tree. So, the decision for player 3 you cannot decompose it like this that you say okay well what is he going to do at this node. The point is at this node is not a well defined question because player does not know that he is at this node. He just knows he is at one of these two nodes. So, whatever action you take has to be a common action that would be prescribed at either of these two nodes. Either at on that will be that it should be the action that he will take on the blue tree as well as the yellow tree. Is this clear? So, then how do we proceed further then? Which part can be made? Okay. So, this has can be made into a of P 2 and P 3. See, there is a trouble here also, right. So, you may think that ok, well what I can do is ok, let me take a simpler example, I think I before I jump, one second, let us let's, let's take this example first. Okay, this is a simpler problem. Now, what would you how would you proceed? No, no, we are not this is we are not playing security, players are playing optimally. You can I, the, the payoff the numbers do not matter, the logic is that uh, is uh, the point is how are we going to decompose the game. I am not asking which specific action is to be chosen, but uh, how do we decompose the game is the issue. A specific instance you may be able to solve once I put in the numbers that is ok, that is a different matter. So, now well player 3 cannot you for player 3 you cannot decide between these two no you cannot basically reason separately for these this node and this node. Now, you can but you can do the following you can get ok let us go one step further into the tree from this node onwards this particular this part of the tree let us let me call it something color it with something else let us call this the green tree. This part of the tree can I reason separately about this? I can because this this tree is sort of a game in itself. It starts with player 2 and player 2 knows that he is at this node because of, because this is a singleton information set for player 2. Player 2 knows that he is at this node and then player 3, what does player 3 know at this this information set? Huh, P 2 has played one of those two actions, what else does he know? Uh, so, if I call this L 1 and R 1, uh, sorry L 1 and R 1. So, what does player 3 know at this at this information set? He knows that P 1 has played R 1 right that information is there. See what what player 3 knows is that he is at one of these two nodes and the only way the game history could have come to one of these two nodes is if player 1 has played R 1 clear. So, from this the although he does not know what has happened after player 1 has played R 1, he, he does know that player 1 has played R 1 ok. So, essentially we are now getting to the question of what exactly do players know and how does that knowledge of what players know, how does that help us decompose the game. So, here player 1 knows R 1 has been played he also knows that p1 ha p2 has played but he doesn't know that p2 what p2 has played is this clear 
he knows that p2 has played but he doesn't know what p2 has played okay so therefore he, for the therefore this green game is a is a game in itself it is p2 has played something okay and now it is p3's turn to play all right likewise p2 essentially knowing that he is at this node knows that this is going to become essentially a simultaneous move, move game between p2 and p3 from here onwards because he will not p2 p3 will not know what p1 is uh, what p2 has played and p2 obviously ha p3 hasn't uh, so p3 doesn't know what p2 uh, p2 is going to play or uh, ha uh, or has played and p2 doesn't know what p3 has played because p3 hasn't played yet clear so therefore this is effectively a simultaneous move game from here onwards so this green tree therefore can be analyzed as a simultaneous move game okay likewise there is a, a, a green tree here on the left also this green tree also can be analyzed as a as a as a simultaneous move game okay so now these are now games in their own right you can analyze them as simultaneous move games find their equilibrium assuming an equilibrium exists and all that okay this once that is done you can then come back to this level where p1 has to decide between l1 and r1 okay and the payoff that is coming from at at each of these nodes the payoff that comes from this red node on the left and the uh, orange node on the right where, what is this payoff going to come from it is going to come from the simul the equilibria of the simultaneous move games the red one will come from the equilibrium of this left green tree and the uh, orange one will come from the equilibrium of this okay and then now you uh, player one can now say okay which of these two is better for them and then play that once again you are, you this would again specify for you strategies because what you would get is that at each information set you would know what player is doing so player 3 what he is doing in this information set will come from this sub game and what he is going to do at this information set is going to come from this sub game likewise player 2 also okay and then player 1 is this clear so this is how you would analyze this sort of game so now let us come to the earlier game that i that i had drawn and let's see how if there is a way to work around this So now suppose if you had this structure, what could you do? Uh, so, okay. So again, let's ask who knows what. What does player three know here? What does player three know here? At this information set, P two has played. Yes. P one has played. Okay. So if you want, I'll give names here. So, what does P3 know at this information set? He knows that P2 has played, he knows that P1 has played. Anything else? He knows P1 has played R1. Right? He knows that P1 has played R1 because he, he knows that he is at one of these two nodes. Okay? When he is at one of these two nodes, it has to be that it has come from this part of the tree. So he, he he knows that P1 has played R1. P2 doesn't know, however, that P1 has played R1. Although P1 has played before him, P2 doesn't know that P1 has played R1. But P3 knows. Is it clear? So now it turns out that this cannot be decomposed further because of this issue. Okay? This is this is this this thing. This one cannot uh, cannot be decomposed further uh, because of this particular problem. Okay? Now. Let me show you another one which uh, which also has this problem. Okay. Yeah. 
again you need to think clearly about what each player knows okay, l2 r2 l2 r2 l1 r1 Okay, and now I'll draw an information set which stretches like this. Okay, so let's call this. Let's call this the orange information set, and uh, the other one is a green information set. Okay, this is for player player three's turn to play here. Now tell me, what does player three know at the green information set to begin with? He knows that P1 has played R1, it is a singleton information set. So, he knows the exact sequence of actions that led to that. Okay. So, he knows that P1 has played R1 and then P2 has played R2. Okay. What does he know at the orange information set? So, he knows P1 has played, of course, P2 has played. Okay. What else? So, what Ashwin was saying, what were you saying? P, P2 has not played R, R2, right? P2 ha could have played R2, but he could have played R2 here, right? So, you have to be careful. What it, what he knows is that R1, R2 as that uh, particular sequence has not occurred. Every other possibility is there. Means, player 1 has played R1 and player 2 has played R2. That the end of these two has not happened. Okay. It could be that player 1 has not played R1, which means L1 has happened and something else has happened or player 1 has played R1 and player 2 has not played R2, which means in this case player 2 has played L2. Is this clear? So, this is so the, the extensive form basic is essentially capturing for you the entire history of the game. The once you know which node you are at, you have perfect history of everything that has happened to bring you to that node. Okay. When you have imperfect information like this, it means that there is some loss of state information essentially. The, the node of the game is the state, uh, the node that the game is at is the state of the game. It's, it tells you where you, you know, think of this as a game of chess, for example. You know, players have various moves, the uh, game keeps moving from one stage to another. Game, uh, chess is a game of perfect information because players can see where the, what the, where the game is, right, the exact configuration of the game. Okay. So, that gives you a game of perfect information. And being at a particular node, you can, you node means not, and node just not just, does not just mean the exact position of the pieces, okay. The same position could have arisen from multiple histories. Node means the exact history that has got you to that, okay. Players are observing all of that, that entire history is recorded, so the players know, are aware of that. But there are versions of, you know, more fancy versions like there is blind chess or and so on, right, where, where players is there or where certain, only certain things are revealed to players. Then players may not know which, what is the exact, which of the several histories that could have led to a certain configuration have actually occurred. Is it clear? Okay. So, uh, now, let me ask you a trick question here. So, let us take this. Okay, the way we defined information sets in uh, in extensive form games, we said they are a partition of the a player's player set, right. Nodes of the tree are divided into player sets, player sets are further partitioned into information sets. Now, this information set is of player 3. So, we, we know, we, we were talking of what player 3 knows of at this information set. Suppose I ask you a question, what does player 1 know at this information set? So, if you think about it, the way we modeled an extensive form game, we said we players have some information and that information is at their information sets. And information sets are subsets of, uh, are, are subsets 
which are formed from nodes that where a, it's the turn of the player to play, right? Now this means that I am not even defining for you what the information is of another player whose no, whose turn it is not to play, right? So at this node, it is the, at these two nodes, it's the turn of player three to play. So I am not even telling you what is the information of other players at this node. So player 3's turn has come to play now, but you might want to know what do other players know at this juncture, right? So this is actually not modeled in the game, okay? Ha, the question is does it matter? Does it matter what player 1 knows at this node? Yeah, exactly. What matters is what he knows when his time, when it's his turn to act. It's of no use knowing so what someone else knows when it's not your turn to act, right? Okay. So what matters is whether what you know when it is your turn to act. Okay. Now here, suppose further after this, it was player one's turn to act. At that time, we can ask, okay, what does he know? I mean, this general knowledge about what's going on in the game is of uh, of no uh, is of no consequence. Okay, so that's why the way we model this is what play what the player whose turn it is to act knows at that in, at the time of acting. Is this clear? Okay, so the, what, one uh, one thing which you have realized now is that the whether you can decompose or not really depends on how the information is spreading through the or how it is structured through this through the game, right? So if your information sets are such that they can help, they can, they are sort of, uh, de they allow for this kind of decomposition, then you can do some decomposition based arguments, okay. So this leads to this whole theory of what is called information structures. So information structure, the information structure is essentially a description of who knows what, okay, in the game, okay, who essentially describes who knows what. Okay, so in particular here, as I said, the, here P3 knows that P1 has played R1, but does not know what P2 has played, etc. Here P2 knows that P1 has played but does not know what he has played, etc., etc., okay. So, whether you can uh, decompose and or simplify games really depends on what the structure, what the information structure of the problem is. So, the information structure actually tells you whether the game has a any kind of admits any kind of algorithmic type of solution. It means where you can, once you can decompose, you can try to make an algorithm out of it, right? Otherwise, you have to write a big normal form and so compute directly. If you can do what, the information structure decides whether you can do something analogous to backward induction uh, in a game, okay? Now, backward induction, for those of you who, are, who know a little bit of uh, dynamic programming, would immediately realize that this is actually nothing but dynamic programming. Right, you are starting from the last uh, last time, uh, time instant. You see what we would do uh, there. Come take that as the cost to go, then uh, go to the time instant before, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is essentially a multiplayer analog of dynamic programming. Now, what this also means is that even if you had a single player problem, whether you can do dynamic programming or not has something to do with the information structure of the problem. Okay. For instance, this could very well have been, although I have written here player 1, player 2, player 3, these could very well have been, you know, player 1 followed by player 1 again, right? It could be player 1 whose turn is this to play first, but then he forgets what he has played, then he has two actions, and then he has some partial memory. Well, if he had played R1 and R2, then he remembers, otherwise he does not. Now, whether you can actually compute a policy recursively like in Bellman's equation, dynamic programming and so on, depends on the stru information structure of the problem, okay? So information structures are fundamental essentially to any kind of dynamic decision making problem. Information, how information from the previous time step is pa passed on to the next time step is fundamental, 
Okay. This is also related to many other phenomena, I mean loss of information for example in thermodynamics physics and so on, all of this is uh, are somehow closely related to this, uh, closely related to you know whenever dissipation happens for example, you lose information from one time step to the other and therefore there is fundamentally an uncertainty about where you know what the configuration is, okay, all right. So, this, this is. Uh, so this, so information structures are uh, are fundamental. Now, what we'll, what I'll quickly tell you is, generalize this particular fact here, which is you know backward induction. So we were, we can do backward induction uh, when the game is of uh, is a game of perfect information. When the game is of perfect information, of course you can do backward induction. But what about the structure allows for backward induction is the question, okay. So, so for example, we just saw that this kind of structure can gives you some form of backward induction, though not exactly, but some kind of decomposition is available, okay. This one does not, this one does not and so on. So, we will just, I uh, will give you an overview of this about when it is possible, when it is not possible and so on, okay. So, at the heart of it what we want to do is we want to take a general dynamic game and decompose it into either you have perfect in games of perfect information, okay, in which case you can they can be decomposed further or you get to a stage, get to a, a singleton node from where a simultaneous move game begins, is this clear? So, we want to get to this kind of a structure. So, either you have a game of perfect information say something like this or a singleton node from which if you go down take the subtree starting from there that subtree is a game of uh, is a simultaneous move game. Once it is a simultaneous move game we know how to analyze and there is nothing more to decompose and because there is a, a singleton node to start off with it means that that is a well defined subtree it, it, because the, the starting player knows that he is at that node. Is this clear? So, this, this is the decomposition and, and frankly there is nothing much beyond this, this is the max we can do uh, in terms of decomposing because information structures can be very wild here you, as you can see this, this is just one example you can have some, some crazy information structure like this stretching from one level to the next, very, very complicated information structures can be there. So, in a given this kind of uh, the, the amount of variety there is in information structures best we can do is you know in this in these kind of settings okay